So we recently put a couple of beers on Nitro here at Clawhammer, made some videos about them, and instantly started getting questions from folks about running Nitro at home. So in this video, I'm gonna run, quickly run through everything you'll need to pour your own Nitro beer at home. This is the kind of tap you want. It basically forms a nine degree um, at the tap head here. The beer pours straight down into the glass. The tap runs two ways. When you do the initial pour, you just pull the tap down like so. You let it fill. You stop it about three quarters of the way full. Let it sit and chill for a minute and then you top it off by pushing the tap back this way. Unlike this, your standard tap, which only opens and closes um, one direction. Moving back from there, we have the shank. There will be a washer on the back of this that keeps it tight. Here we have our barbed fitting, which connects to a liquid line, all right? Liquid line is typically a lot longer than this. Generally, you wanna keep them long to reduce foam. I'm not sure how that works out for nitro, but with regular CO2 gas, there are calculations you can do um, to figure out how long your lines need to be. This is just a short hose for demo purposes. Obviously, if this is real, you would also have a little hose clamp here and a hose clamp here. This is a fairly expensive metal fitting. Um, I, I just got a few of these and I have to say I really like them. More importantly, I have to say I really dislike these plastic fittings. Uh, I've had so many of these things leak, crack, break, whatever. I'm just over it and I'm looking for something new and this is what I've moved on to. This seems to be the only other option. This will connect to the out on your keg. It's just a simple, you know, push it down and it locks into place. Any standard keg will do. However, you'll need to purchase a nitro keg lid, which actually has a gas post in the lid itself with a, a little tube that comes down off the bottom and, and rests down in the liquid. I suppose there's a way you could just attach this to the in port on your keg. I would just say, look down to the comments below. Someone will say something to the effect of, this guy's a moron, he should know the answer to this and they'll give you the right answer. And that's fine. Um, I appreciate the fact that people contributing and give us more information than we previ previously started with. That's how we learn things. So this is what I know. What we're using is a lid here and we do have a hose. You do need a, um, this, this is actually called um, like a little gas stone, which produces tiny little bubbles that are then more easily absorbed by the liquid. So this is the next thing you'll need. You'll just pop your lid in your keg like so. We'll hook our liquid line up to the out. There we go. All right, now on the other side of the keg, is a uh, gas in tap. We're not gonna mess with that at this point. We're just gonna leave it be because we have this gas tap at the top. That's where our gas in is going to go. Like I said, we're pushing the gas up through the bottom through that little aeration stone. Your gas line obviously runs to a tank, but it doesn't run, run just straight to the tank, it runs to a regulator. So this is a nitro beer regulator. You won't likely be able to use a CO2 regulator because generally the um, connection to the tank on the regulator um, is going to look like this and generally there will be a female connector on your tank. So here's what a gas CO2, normal CO2 tank um, connection looks like it's flat. It butts up against the flat surface on the CO2 tank. This one is more of a cone shaped here. Like I said, the tanks usually have that kind of connection on them. However, the place that I get my uh, gas carries tanks that are sort of a mixed bag. Um, some have female cone inputs. I'm not sure the technical name for that part. Some have flat. This one happens to have a flat. So what I needed was an adapter. 
So I guess I really didn't need this nitro tap. Probably, I probably could have gotten away with using just a normal one, but since this is specific to nitro, you know, we have it anyway. So here's how this is gonna work out on my system. This regulator is going to screw into the adapter and then the adapter is gonna screw into the keg. If you already have the CO2 set up, you probably know this, but in case you don't, most uh, of your CO2 um, keg connectors need this little nylon washer. If you don't install this washer, you are set up to spend a lot more money on CO2 than you need because you're gonna lose a lot of CO2 due to leakage. So always make sure you have one of these uh, washers when you're hooking up to your gas tank. This um, cone connector, if you noticed, has a little um, nylon uh, rubber sort of washer built in. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this together like so. You want to make sure you have these nice and tight uh, because you know gas is expensive. You don't want to be, you don't want to be losing it to leakage. So this tank of gas is actually what's called beer gas. It is 25% CO2, 75% nitrogen. All right, and that's it as far as the equipment goes. We have a complete setup here from the tank to the regulator, the ball lock, in and out, the keg, and the tap. First of all, never open the valve on your tank unless your regulator valve is off because you, you don't know the pressure here. This pressure could be through the roof and you know these kegs can only take so much pressure. Turn that off first, you open this up and then the pressure will be established here on the gauge. And then when you do open this up, open it all the way. My understanding is that these tanks seal closed, the valve seals closed when you push down and then actually it seals open when you pull all the way up. If you just have this half open, my understanding is that you could leak some gas here, that would not be cool. And lastly, this, um, keg lube is your friend. This is food safe, uh, like petroleum jelly type stuff. It seals the lids and, and other areas where you might um, lose gas. I will leave you with one last Nacho Pura. Thanks for watching.